Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. We have been discussing an important topic which is transition metal sigma alkyl complexes over the last few lectures and have been looking at it from the methods that are available for their preparations. We have also looked at the reactivity the stability of these compounds. In particular, in the last lecture, we have looked at different strategies that are available to stabilize these transition metal sigma alkyl complexes, which otherwise are very reactive compounds. And all of these strategies that we have encountered are focused towards one particular decomposition reaction, which is beta elimination. And what we had seen that all of these strategies are put in place to suppress beta eliminations in transition metal sigma alkyl complexes and if done successfully they impart reasonable stability to these uh, organometallic compounds. So, in the pretext of beta elimination, we had seen that there are primarily three approaches towards inhibiting it. The first one is sort of the application of Brett's rule. The second one applies towards ligand which does not have beta hydrogen, so that beta hydrogen elimination does not undergo. And last one uh, is the one that focuses on the metal center uh, by making the metal center coordinatively saturated as a result beta hydrogen elimination is elim um, inhibited. Now, with that in mind, we were in the last class, we were looking at the reasons for decomposition of titanium tetramethyl. Titanium tetramethyl is a highly reactive compound that has a decomposition temperature of around minus 40 degree centigrade and this compound is both coordinatively unsaturated as well as electronically unsaturated. As well as electronically unsaturated. Coordinatively unsaturated means that it has a coordination number of 4. So, still most of the transition metal uh, exhibit coordination number as high up to 6. So, in that from the from that pretext it is, it is still coordinatively unsaturated and it also is electronically unsaturated as it has total valence electrons of Eight. So, this is highly electronically unsaturated as it, it has 8 valence electron as opposed to the inner transition metal complexes which obey 18 valence electron rule. And because of this extensive unsaturation both coordinative as well as electronic this titanium tetramethyl decompose by a bimolecular pathway.
that involves the interaction of trans, uh, titanium with the titanium methyl bond of uh, a neighboring molecule. This weakens the titanium methyl bond as these are three centered two electron non classical bonds resulting in decomposition of this titanium tetramethyl moiety. Now, while analyzing this, one can conceive that if somehow the coordinative saturation along, uh, along titanium if it is increased either by coordination increased coordination or through sterics then one should be able to attain a more stable titanium complex. For example, if one goes uh, to titanium methyl trithoxide where you have one alkyl attached to titanium for example, then one sees that because of this O ethoxy which is slightly more uh, uh, bigger than the methyl moiety and also the oxygen has a uh, lone pair in it which are stereogenic in nature, then this bimolecular pathway can sort of uh, be a more uh, conspicuous. Is more conspicuous or uh, is visible in this complex as this complex exclu exclusively exists as a dimer of the type shown. So, this is a exclusively dimeric molecule and this fully supports or gives evidence to the bimolecular pathway as observed in the titanium tetramethyl complex. The difference being this is a 3 C 2 E bond whereas, in this case the, there are two, two classical 2 C 2 E bonds between titanium and oxygen. Otherwise, this bears a testimony to the fact that titanium is both electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated in this titanium tetramethyl complex and that it undergoes a decomposition uh, pathway using this bimolecular uh, uh, mechanism. Now, if one improves or increases the steric bond of this ethoxide in titanium to a something which is more bulkier for example, say isopropoxide even this dimer 
becomes a monomer. So that brings us to a very important uh, compound which is titanium methyl triisopropoxide. This is mostly monomer. Now, for this kind of complexes, R, T, I, X3 type complexes. the pi donor, st pi donor strength increases along x being chloride less than OR less than NR2. Another interesting observation to be made over here that apart from the bulk of the isopropyl moieties that make this complex monomer, there is also some kind of pi interaction occurring between the oxygen lone pair and the empty d orbital of titanium. And oxygen lone pair. And hence, the importance of pi donor strength increases and it turns out that the pi donor strength increases uh, from X being a halide to alkoxide to a, a dialkyl amine moiety. Now, we come to this important observation of the fact then that when all the criteria for suppressing beta elimination are realized, the three criteria being that formation of the olefin is inhibited uh, from beta elimination owing to the olefin being energetically unfavorable. The second criteria is that the ligand would not have any beta uh, uh, hydrogens on the beta carbon, so that the beta hydrogen elimination anyway will be inhibited. And lastly, if the metal central metal atom in the organometallic compound is coordinatively saturated, then it will not participate in any kind of uh, uh, beta elimination process. Now, if one were to design a molecule where all of the three criteria are fulfilled, then that molecule ex is expected to be very stable. When all criteria that we have discussed for suppressing beta elimination are fulfilled then very stable complexes obtained. For example, this particular chromium complex which has a dimethyl arsine and a aryl group 
with CH2 three of this ligand bound to the metal center of this type what results is a very st extremely stable compound that is stable up to 300 b d 50 degree centigrade. So, this is extremely stable compound and what we see that all the criteria of beta elimination have been inhibited. For example, there is no beta hydrogens, that the both the beta positions are blocked. Secondly, that these will not give a olefin that would uh, be energetically favorable. And lastly, the metal being 6 coordinated with R arsine and 3 dimethyl, 2 of the dimethyl moieties and the phenyl ring is extremely coordinately saturated. So, no way can the metal center chromium participate in any kind of beta hydrogen elimination. So, the formation of these compounds testifies that the approaches which have been undertaken towards inhibiting beta elimination is a successful one. As a result, one can obtain organometallic compound that is extremely stable. Also, this example negates the fact or belief that organometallic compounds are thermodynamically unstable. But it turns out that the thermodynamic stability is not much an issue for organometallic compound, whereas kinetic reactivity resulting to its uh, uh, so called observed uh, instability is what is the primary reason for their uh, extremely high reactive nature. And that ca if can be uh, uh, suppressed by obtaining a proper understanding of their decomposition pathway. For example, transition metal sigma uh, bonds can occur in classical Warner type kinetically inert complexes So, these uh, being kinetically inert as uh, uh, they are both kinetically as well as coordinatively uh, saturated. For example, these are mainly seen for chromium 3 D 3 systems, cobalt 3 D 6 systems, rhodium 3 D6 systems. For example, for rhodium pentamine plus where 
5 ammonia and 1 ethyl group is bound to the uh, rhodium. So, rhodium has 5 ammonia and the ethyl group, ethyl group has the beta hydrogen. However, this compound is kinetically inert. as the metal center is both coordinatively and electronically saturated. So, coordinatively saturated means it has a coordination number of 6 and electronically saturated meaning that it is a 18 valence electron complex. The 18 comes from 10 plus 10 from the amine plus 1 11 and rhodium in a neutral method is 9 11 plus 9 20 and there is 2 charge. So, this is the 18 valence electron complex. So, this complex as we saw being both electronically and coordinatively saturate uh, is because of this saturation this complex is overall kinetically inert despite having a ethyl moiety which has beta hydrogen. So, what we saw that if the third criteria for elimination is satisfied properly then the ethyl moiety despite having a beta hydrogen. Uh, cannot uh, eliminate and the compound becomes kinetically inert. That this is a very interesting example. Uh, another example is this transition metal alkyl bond when bound to main group elements as ligands sometimes are also stable and the example is this class of compounds called organoranium oxides. So, in organoranium oxides main group elements act as ligand in addition to or alongside sigma alkyl ligands. To illustrate this, I like to give the following examples. Methyl rhenium trioxide or methyl rhenium oxo bis peroxide or dioxo rhenium trimethyl These are a class of compounds where there is a rhenium alkyl moiety bound to uh, heavier atoms. These compounds has tremendous application is various in various catalytic re reactions which we will take up in the following class. 
In this class, I summarize that we have looked into uh, the kinetically inert nature of transition metal sigma alkyl complexes, the reason behind that and also how to make extremely stable uh, transition metal sigma alkyl complexes by suppression of various beta hydrogen elimination pathways and if all of the strategies are put in place in a single molecule, if all of them is realized all together then we extremely stable or transition metal sigma alkyl complexes may be synthesized and also we have seen that if a metal center is coordinatively as well as electronically saturated then metal sigma alkyl groups despite having beta hydrogens uh, uh, they would not eliminate and the compound would be more stable. And with this we look forward to this important class of compounds in the next lecture called organo uranium oxides uh, which has uh, very good applications in chemical catalysis and uh, oxidation reactions and that will be uh, the subject of the topic for the next lecture. Thank you.